Hey everyone, I'm Tassinix, and welcome to Plotting and Scheming, covering Season 51, 5 vs. 5, Grand Arena Championship Week 3. I am joined by my three co-hosts, Dagger, TJ, and Sasha Isha. How are you guys doing this evening? Doing well, Tass, doing well. <laughs> the, the enthusiasm is overwhelming. <laughs> All right. It's good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you... Tess, I'm doing amazing. Thank you. Ah! Yeah. Riotous in my energy. Very best, in my very best Eeyore voice, I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, we're, fuck it, if we're doing that. Hey, Tess. How's okay. it going? Okay. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's get right into it here. We, we've we survived this season. It was, um, you know, the high efficiency one shot season, right? A lot. I, I think like the the score everybody was going for every round was something like eighteen fifty. Um, however, well we met that mark, that was kind of the mark that defined whether you win or lost uh, a lot of the time this season. So let's get into segment one. What worked? Uh, I know Dagger didn't play a whole lot this week, so you'll be brief. So we'll start with you. What uh, what went smoothly? Where you really needed it to. Well, let's just say I I only played my last round and I really regretted it immediately after using Bane. Using Bane Sash versus Reva was just really fun. Mm -hmm. Um but I think the only thing I did that kind of surprised me at all is I came across a Leviathan that was Mark Six Staff and uh Malgus starting. Interesting. Um, so Bomber was going to come out the bench first. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. went in with Empire, and it was a little dicey. I think I lived out with a 66. Wow, yeah. But man, that that was really rough, because Sass off the rip, like, there was no world where my Kent was going to come in and lift. Mm -hmm. I just got the reinforcement bonus, and like like I said, I, I limped out of there. That, that, that one, I wasn't sure what was going to happen going in, because it's like, all right, let's do it. And that's one of the only things I did this week. I was like, yeah, I don't know. And it worked. No, that's pretty clutch. I'd take it. All right, TJ, how about you? What worked for you? Yeah, I'm going by a new name now. Efficient TJ. Apparently, this is the, the week he gets to be not proud of it. I get to say it very begrudgingly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I, I was, You know what? I'm going to say Tass, and I'm going to give it to you as a thought, right? We talked about it before. My, my biggest one that got me my where I needed to be was Night Sisters, of all things. Um... I was playing the, I don't know his name. I lost him round one, but you can't say the last part of his name, right? Um, yeah. Super well, like really good player. Plays well above his belt. Um, and I wasn't paying attention to everything, but the one thing he set up was um, really tenacious gas and a really tenacious uh, saw setup. So what the idea was, what I was going to go in with, which originally was uh, Afra um, on the gas but then i had to go rethink about it so he did some mm -hmm. tricky things to try to catch me but it was night sisters that got me the where i need to be for the points because it was qui-gon jinn right it was the full money qui-gon jinn um and the one that was getting everybody fits i know dagger is one of your staples on defense that holds very well Tass, i know you as well mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but i just happened mm -hmm. to see go by uh, night sisters nothing crazy and it was getting 65 so i gave it a try i was like i'll be damned got a good 65 out of it so nice sisters have been my clutch team all season uh where you think they wouldn't be just because it's been for this efficiency for them to come in and and clean house has been amazing i think that's my my favorite one is that without that nice sisters win i don't think i would have won round three and i got to go three and this week because of it mm -hmm. to, to live in a world where night sisters and efficiency get mentioned in the same breath man that, yeah yeah dude right. it's been a long time it's the yeah. Zori killer. It's the it's like it's all these teams that are there to just eat your banners. And it's like, who would have thought that Night Sisters of all things are the sixty five of the world, right? It's like, no, it's a GL. It's True. like no, no, nope, they would have gotten a sixty two or a sixty three. But you take Night Sisters, sixty five, baby. And that. Other than that, everything else was fun. Um I showed Tass and I did one. Uh SOK was I think everywhere this week for everybody. Um Bane. Bane just 64 in the hell out of it like it was nothing was and even a 65 one of them was pretty damn cool to watch the whole team just vaporize so Bane the GL killer is as he will forever be is just amazing fantastic all right Sasha how about you what were some great attacks 
that uh, came through when you really needed it. Yeah. So beyond that, that main character, which uh, yeah, spoiler, he's he's really good. Uh, mm-hmm. So there was some really. Uh, it was an interesting week, and I had great matches. Really, a, a very fun week. This week, I had. Uh, I would have. I was in what otherwise would have been like a you know all kind of top ten uh, bracket. I had Brader. I had uh, Valico. Uh, Valico. Uh, I had Partick. Uh, it was really good. Uh, and very efficient uh, both ways. Uh, my opponents were really strong as well. Across all ground and fleets, I looked at that and I'm, I, I went 42 attacks and one drop over the week. I went two wins and one loss. So <laughs> one loss. Uh, nice. So it, you know, a, a single drop will definitely burn you, um, but it, a, a great match with, with Partick. So uh, the what did work for me, um, I'd say, uh, one, a couple of things that were a little bit of kind of intentional pivots on my part. One, bringing DTMG to offense uh, in one of the rounds. Uh, when I, I, I looked at it, and it's just, it's clear from some people's history, mine included, that uh, Malgus uh, and the Sith Empire can really tear up DTMG and like often with a 65. So I'm like, if that's the case, like, why don't I just um, try and make Malgus efficient targets a little more scarce and bring DTMG over to offense. And DTMG did great versus like a Savage led Treya squad, a a very clean 65 for DTMG. And I know it can punch higher, but you know, Savage Treya is normally either burning like C or something that's pretty darn expensive. So to do that with a squad that otherwise was going to fall to a 65 felt efficient. Um, I had another that uh, is going to lose relevance in just hours here because it was involving the Jawa Datacron. And that was, uh, I had one opponent set uh, Star Killer. I think probably just hoping I'd forget that that still is out there as a counter. But it was a really nice, uh, efficient sixty-five with um, like you know that's a moderate quality jaw was. I think I've mostly you know, relics. I had a couple seven, maybe the others were five or six, um, but it worked nicely. And then uh, the last one, kind of uh, tying on one thing that TJ said, um, I myself had set Slack on D. Uh, I think the previous week I did in round one of this week, but one of the, one of the things I realized was causing me pain in a very high efficiency meta was the new separatist droid step that, uh, that squad, I either was going to have to really overkill and still it was going to be a little bit painful, um, or throw Tuscans, which had been my preference and Tuscans. I didn't have, I don't have like all, uh, relic seven Tuscans. So I tend to lose a Tuscan here or there, uh, unless I'm lucky enough to time it with their Kron, uh, for the revive. And so I decided not to do that. But if you pivot slacker off of defense, and you put take him on offense, he is a really smooth 69. I thought, nice. So I'll do that. Uh, so uh, I, I did slacker against Sap twice each time for 69s. Wow. That is great. Yeah. Um, I had a similar observation regarding slacker, and I'll cover I'll cover it later. But, yeah, that's, um, that's a great point you just made. Oh. So, so that reminded me, I fought Kiwi in my last round, and mm-hmm. I got to do Tuscans versus Darth Vader, Lord Vader, and I got the Afra, like, full weight. Nice. Very Tuscans nice. Uh, taking down a GL. I love it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah there's I, no I, dot. I, those, those completely blank, because I didn't make any notes for this week, so I wasn't sure if I'd show up to this. But yeah. Yeah. Those were both fun. You'll see them in my history. And I'm sure he's going to be I, not I, very I happy that. at looking at both of those. Oh, yep. totally. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Well, How about you, Tess? Yeah, yeah. For my part here, guys, um, let's see. What worked really well for me? I had a GG stap of my own that I took out with Mother Talzin, and it was really, really safe. Uh, it was only a 61, but that's because of doubt. Um, that That's pretty much it. There was just uh, not enough time to get my guys to drop doubt. And be able to use Marin's middle to, you know, top everybody off. They just die too quickly for that. But after doubt is gone, that is probably going to be an easy slam, among other things. But, um, bu- bu- bu. all right, that was round one, round two. Against a dash IG-11, Bam, Vandor, and Quill with the badass, you know, Bam Cron, offense on six, prod up three, Bam, um, Bam nine. 
We went in Ouroboros Grief Mando Zam. Found that one on GG65 banners. It was fine. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What was the other one? There was a really good one in here. There was... Uh, Afro BT1, Triple Zero B2, Underman versus the same dash kind of setup. Um, Trey and Nyla Savage, 67, uh, just a very well set up trench team. So just the way we would like to run it, Sasha. Um, 67 banners. That was really, really smooth. Uh, and then we had a, Sa a Sana Hondo team. That was uh, Night Sisters. And we were one turn denied from it being like a 65 and it ended up being a 60 but it still came through because it meant i didn't have to make a worse choice elsewhere as far as attacks though on fleet um my my last round here was against an opponent who really just knows how to use leviathan on offense against any leviathan con uh and it wasn't it wasn't going to be a good banner stripping defense regardless so i swapped it out and used it myself against his malevolence. Um, just B28, Dagger, and uh, Fury. Just those three ships for a 77. And that was the spy comp off the bench. So, wow, that was a crazy good one. All right, uh, enough on attacks. Let's hear about, uh, you know, what? enough about the good news. Let's hear the bad news. What didn't work? What failed? What let us down? Dagger, you uh, just played this last round here. Anything break bad for you? Yeah, yeah. So I heard you mention this a little bit earlier, but uh, you know how you... I didn't think through Reva versus Saw, because there's no buff immunity. SRP. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, yeah, that's I'm an awful feeling. Like, yeah. I, I melted them in like 20 seconds. Like yeah. it was just yeah. not a close fight. It wasn't even close to being yeah. close. And then just like three minutes and or four minutes and like 35 seconds of I guess this fucker is not gonna die. Yep. Womp um, womp. Yeah, and then uh I think that's the only one that flopped super hard. Oh man, I limped out super hard from a Nego versus uh uh I should have lost this. I don't know how I won. I think I got I got a late dodge which saved my ass. But uh man, Nego versus uh uh Mace is miserable. Oh, mm. just absolutely miserable. Yeah, and I then, can imagine uh, that, yeah. And then Mal got his booty hole blown out by uh by uh, resistance. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Dang. Zori came in and my hyena bomber disappeared, and it's like, oh this is fun. <laughs> You are disinvited from the party. Yeah, yeah. So, right. yeah, yeah. Just basically, just I had one cool fight, and the other two were just like, "Hold on to your butts." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. What else? What else you got? Uh, outside of that, it was just like some really bad banner wins. Um, Star Killer versus Gas Cracks was like fifty-seven. And was that with or without a lot of deflection? It was like twenty one percent, so like not a not, not a ridiculous not a ton, amount. Ton, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Leia versus Ray got two people whirlwinded. Ugh. Ooh. Now, which comp did you run for that? Because I've definitely had some better and worse Leia comps on offense for for banners. The 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 Jin Rat is bullshit. Never doing that again. Yeah, I wasn't super satisfied with it either. I think the the most stable one's Old Ben Mon Mothma. That sixth body to divide up the ultimates, never bad. Honestly, just Old Ben like uh, I Old Ben uh, Chupio. I don't I, I don't That's see myself too. using CLS very frequently going forward either, That's especially true. if they don't expand the board. Just CLS. It's, we live in this like really ridiculous world where. CLS is just like not good enough. Yeah, well, it's. I mean, you, we never thought that power creep would consume him. Anyway, we've seen plenty of teams fall by the wayside, but somehow CLS was always integral to something that could compete at the top. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, not not so much. So very fair point. All right, uh, TJ, how about you? What let you down? So I, I got to go two ways. I'll go with my, I, we'll call it my greedy, which are you the one you know about, Das. 
Um, and then the third one was what you think would be safe, but you start running out of points and that, that caught me. So it like hurt my banner count. All right. So for the historic one, uh, where it's just, I got greedy. It was Radis. I got caught slipping trying to do the Tarkin three man. Um, and you called out where you don't do it, right? Cause I was trying for like the highest points I've ever gotten like ever. Yeah. And, and I'll explain why. I explicitly so I was, warned you against this. I, I said did. it was I a bad idea. It did, and, and you know what? I've had it work, and it's just the time it didn't, mm -hmm. so it's it's fine. Because mm -hmm. uh, I was going for an 1872 uh, score, so it was like that was just me being historically greedy. Reach for the which star. I'll say like this: even with the drop, I still beat my opponent 1846 to 1837. So that tells you where I was at. Where I was like, yeah. I've never had that, so let's try for it. Um, uh, begin. Obviously, I thought my world was over, uh, but it happened to set such a good defense that I banner blood him because he didn't drop anywhere. But I banner butt him the entire fight, so I still got the win. Yeah, nice. The one, the one that caught me, um, because I needed to move pieces. Right, we were talking about this task. So I was going through my strategy. Um, he has Tuskins in the back, and then he had all of these these comps up top. Where if I didn't pay attention, I was going to get hosed. Right, mm -hmm. he was setting it up perfectly. So I was going to three man trio the Tuskins in the back. Um, needed to move pieces around to get trio on his dash, which afforded me. So I was like, all right, I'm going to take Agrab. But as you know, we've spread our Rogue One teams like kind of thin. So this week we talked about it, and I was doing Cassian on my Saw team. Mm -hmm. So all I had was this leftover Rogue team. I put, um, who was it? Uh, I, I still had SRP, not SRP. I still had um, uh, the droid and all the other pieces, but I had to take these other two B team people with Jin, and I couldn't recover. So I think I limped out of there with like a 57. I could because of what the setup was doing. I didn't have enough of the actual tools. I got the win, but man, did it hurt my feelings when without all that stuff, Radis gets hurt, man. And so that was where I was like, I almost lost that because uh, I just didn't have enough of all the tools we needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that uh, perfectly makes sense. I've had similar yeah. this week myself. All right, Sasha, how about you? Where did uh, things all go terribly wrong? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, credit to my opponents, actually, for really, like, thoughtful, I think, strategic deployment of some high deflection crons, because it was, um, it was against a saw squad, and then against uh, gas, and then each of those, <clears throat> where I really wanted to be able to use some special damage counters that were non GLs. And, uh, you know, I think for for the saw squad, it was I have like one Afrogron, it doesn't happen to have any special accuracy. And there was uh, high deflection on it. I think this was Berator had that, uh, maybe Partick as well. And the previous week, uh, Old Ben had it when I, I faced him. Both uh, In each case, it, it led, it was messy, you know, and in this meta that hurts, I, I want to say, in each case, I dropped seven to eight banners. Um, but I, when I looked at it, like kind of back to the point, I just think it was really shrewd on the opponent's part to have high deflection there and on gas because they were both bottom front wall. And it leaves you with this tough choice of like, I, I know I'm going to go in with some meaningful risk of banner bleed, possibly even a drop. Like it could have gone with a really bad targeting RNG, uh, like I could have lost Afra. But regardless, you're going to burn some banners uh, or you're going to spend a GL before you know what's in the back wall. So yeah. I, I thought that was shrewd on their part. Um, yes. On the gas one, uh, Partick and Berater. So Berater, I used uh, you know, EPMJ Starkiller. Should be pretty comfortable against the gas cracks. But like against Berater, it dropped 11 banners. Against Partick, it dropped nine. And I, I, you know, I got the win, but I sure as hell in this meta felt like a loss. A great cost. Then. Uh, yeah, there, it was just, I, I thought it was just really like kind of sound defensive principles on their part to do that. Um, and made me really wish that I had a Chirrut Datacron with high deflection. I don't. But um, the uh, the other thing that was really uh, like self inflicted, but it was just like a powerful reminder is like the one drop I had uh, over the whole week was because I put a Datacron on where I didn't double check what the um, level three was. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was against a. a Qui Gon, Kellen Beck, JKA, GK, Cam squad. And I brought in a squad that I really like against it. Um, I hadn't used it yet, but I just like the the way the kits read for it. And that was Bad Batch. It's just um, you, uh, 
you, you, your fifth is Crex, and Crex has so many regenerative abilities. Plus, you know, you can get a uh, a uh, Rebel Fighter Kron that's going to give extra turn meter when he uses his uh, second special. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. You know, with the the light side level three protection up, uh, you know, I can withstand the J, you know, JKA kind of everything. I'd had a lot of success with that. Mm-hmm. But I brought one that wasn't with the protection up, and I noticed it pretty quickly when I'm like, why do my dudes really seem like they're uh, they're so thin or falling apart? And sure enough, yeah, they blasted three cracks pretty quickly. Um, and it was just a matter of you know failing to double check. But uh, there's also, I mean, that JKA squad, that Qui-Gon Jinn JKA squad, when it's really well modded, like Partix was, like mm-hmm. if you <laughs> you come wrong, you're going to get screwed over. So that did not work. Th- those would be my three. All right. I believe that this, uh, God, I, I'm so glad I, I've actually been spared fighting those really, you know, top bracket data crunts. Um, yeah, I don't envy you for that. Cause yeah, there's very, those, that sounds so bad. Like I have definitely lost matches by less than the, the margins that you described losing on those two teams. So yeah, I'm right there with and, you. And like, so really quickly, Tad, like, I'll, I'll please, see if please. you would have made the same decision. So, like, when I looked at, um, let's, like, I, I dropped 11 banners against Parader against that gas squad with high deflection. And then Partic mm-hmm. as well. Each of them had, like, roughly 80%, 75 to 80% deflection. And um, I had 40%. I'm curious, like, Dagon and TJ, too. I had a 40% special accuracy cron. Just, it was for light side. wasn't going to do any good for the star killer squad otherwise um but at 40 percent special accuracy and i figured it was still worth it would you guys have done that uh so you're kind of narrowing that gap down from like 75 to 80 down to like 35 to 40 percent deflection effectively if i did do it yeah you take that risk i i have done it but not without the ones of you're going to lose banners i did my not a necessity but i had it to a, a much thinner margin only because I was very um, hesitant. Like I said, I only faced 30% deflection, but it felt like 100. So I took the, the real right. brunt of the RNG, right? So it's like I yeah. played it much closer. But even then, because I was doing that, I had to take the right cron. That equaled out to they get to stay alive a lot longer. So you have to finesse the fight much better than it's, you know, point and click. I was like, well, now I need to leave this alive longer. Let's try to get something back. But by that point, they've still eaten up some good banners. Right. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Um, I mean, for my part, not too bad for drops this week. Um, against Qui Gon Jin, J.K. Cam, Kellerin, and May. So I've had J.M.L. Hoda be successful two times, and then this third battle, it dropped. Um, they were able to lock down Hoda enough of the time that it uh it, it it mattered it mattered just doing jml hoda so we lost hoda we were able to kill like just about everybody it was like cam and jka in the end something like that uh alone and you know i just cleaned that up with bad batch but lesson learned there is you know if we're still doing this next time um i i have uh i have a very clear idea what i'll be doing we'll mention that in the lessons learned um as far as other drops, yeah, I got bit by the same thing. Dagger uh, mentioned the Reva into Saw with SRP. It's the only time I actually even thought about doing it um, this week. And it's uh, it's because I kind of just haphazardly use C against Gas Cracks up front, even though I kind of pre-planned to use JML and I forgot about that. And that would have been less banners than a 68, but the C would have been more smooth elsewhere on the board and things would have been fine but uh yeah the the reva the reva was costly and yeah that's that's about it all right guys segment three standout defenses dagger lead us off i don't know why it keeps holding but seer i mean i do know why it keeps holding it's because it has like 80 percent armor (laughs) <laughs> and dark side offense stack. This is very nice. Very, very, very nice. Uh, the armor and then I got obscene. a hold with Zori and a hold with Qui-Gon, but those were like, you know, oh man, what, did I, what do I have left for these? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, just as you would intend, yeah. 
They have to do. Yeah, with I mean, the Qui Gon was the gentleman's drop, right? Kill Qui Gon, go and clean up the rest. Hey, that's that's okay. That is like the the primo yep. Qui Gon tax. So yeah, yeah, that's 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 what, that's what I mean. It's just like, and then Zori held, but again, it was one of those where like I think he was, I I just kind of glanced at it, but he was like eight attacks into it, didn't clear it, or just like had nothing left to clear it. Fair enough. Must have said a really heavy defense. Mm, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how heavy? Uh, there was like I think three or four GLs showing. I don't know. I didn't mm, attack. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um. All right. Well, TJ, how about you? Your standouts. What held the line? Uh, man, I, I, obviously we, we we're living in a world. Nobody nobody dropped anything this week. Oh uh, wow! Nice. So what 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 I have to go off of is. The way we set the defense test, everything we talked about and how deep we went, the banner bleed. So it was just the overall making them walk down the trail is what really did them in. Mm -hmm. Because it was pulling the – it's really pulling the pinchers, right? So, like, pulling the points here and there, uh, getting a big drop on somebody. I think they got a 58. And it was, like, the Zori with the high deflection, the gas with the high deflection, these, these subsequent setups that were catching the people. Mm -hmm. um, that – and then for me, my round three, what caught them – my guy was doing the, um, I guess you just call it the triple attacker with the Levi against the Levi. So I swapped up my reinforcements to have my shuttle come out first, and mm. it pulled an additional three or four banners, which is funny. I have to wow, hoop, toot my horn about that. But getting that, and then for me to be able to get a 76, a 76, and a 74 on fleet, that's what pushed me over the edge to get the win. Um, mm. So fleets and then playing them the way I needed to play them, and it working better than I thought was my big one. Hmm. All right. Um, Sasha, how about you? Your killer defenses. You know, for, for this week, um, I think I got a total of three holds, maybe. Okay, yeah, I think it was so. three holds. Um, one was uh, Bo-Katan Mandalore. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I have to look at history just to see what it was. Um, and uh, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. It may have been a JMK or I, I I don't know, although JMK should be able to take her out. But uh, she died, but everything else survived. Uh, so it was without its lead and easy two shot after that. But the fact that she survived. Um, so, And I know it wasn't a BAM because that opponent had BAM on defense. Um, then uh, I had one, uh, one hold by gas and then one hold uh, by actually it was Finn resistance squad. Kind of back to the theme of uh, the set thirteen data crons on defense. I had one really strong deflection cron, and I put it on uh, on that Finn squad. And I wouldn't be surprised if somebody brought like an EPM JSK. We'll see. But um, having the week before experienced the displeasure of bringing like EPSK MJ against like a really high deflection cron uh, Finn squad, I figured I'd. I put it out there. It wasn't my history. So I think it snagged one opponent. Those were my total three holds. Good stuff. Um, for my part here, we actually had some great luck with Trench. And, you know, I have Django and Trench at Relic Mountain. God bless you. So they're, they're nasty, nasty. Uh, sorry, what was that? God bless you. Yeah, Trent. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we had some good luck there. It was favorable. Um, we had a Saw team hold a whole bunch, so it's like he had to withdraw on the first go and then had to start picking it apart, and it was like 11, 12 attempts later he got he got through it, so that was a good... Uh, had a three-shot on DTMG, one Qui-Gon hold, and then there was uh, the first round of this week, I actually swapped things up and had a triple GL back wall, and that locked... Uh, gosh, that cost three drops uh, on the opponent after having some drops up front. Uh, one executor hold, and that's just because I saw that this opponent was pretty unstable um, on average against uh, Dagger up front, Ky um, you know, a Leviathan. So Dagger B28 and Fury. And uh, he's, he's winning it for like 67 and dropping it some of the time, so set that down, and sure enough, got a drop and had to clean it up. And that's really about it. Yeah, I have a little bit of TJ's problem where, aside from 
though those I mean that's that's more than I deserve I guess in terms of drops but as a proportion of attacks still not a lot so I guess that's it for me all right guys lessons learned it's time to uh to take it all home think about what we're going to be able to apply next time we roll around to fives we know that we won't have set 12 with us um, and we're going to cover everything, you know, um, about our thoughts about the upcoming 3v3 season in our next video, in which we'll also have our thoughts about how the new Datacron set 14 will, um, you know, will be affecting that. By the way, shameless plug, Datacron set 14 video will be coming out later this week. Uh, for everybody who's subscribed on, on YouTube, you'll get the ping about it. And for all my patrons, you've already had it for at least a day. Enjoy the early access to it. Look forward to your feedback. Um, but yes, right back into the heat here. Dagger, let's talk about uh, your lessons learned. Um, like, didn't really learn any lessons from playing this week. Um, <laughs> I learned nothing. Well, it, it's one of those where it's just, I'm going to try to be positive on this. The, the efficiency meta is here to stay, so when I have the opportunity to mess around, I should take it. Hmm? That's what I learned this week. Like, if your opponent puts up, like, an... Like, in, in 3v3, I, I forget what a good score is, but if my opponent averages, like, 57-plus on my entire board, just have some fun. <laughs> have yeah. some fun. Don't don't sweat too much. Just have some fun. Right? That That's kind of how I looked at this five, month of 5v5. If my opponent put up an 18-50-plus, it's like, all right, time to mess around, guys. Yep. Very good. Very, very good. All right. Uh, TJ, how about you? Your lessons learned from this week. Well, if this is any indicator of what we're coming into, man, the amount of time it's going to take is going to kill me. Um, and I think, Tash, you know as well as I do, I spent right up to the very minute uh, plotting out and scheming. We're talking full in, and this is just in fives, right? Um, the lessons learned really is having to turn my heels around and move to something new is rough. And then coming in and now trying to figure out teams – Basically, as I study you, I'm, I'm looking for your 62s or 61s or whatever it's going to be, your 56 or 55. Mm -hmm. That's the game we're in right now. So mm -hmm. taking that where it's at, really do Tass's thing, right? I can't uh, – I'll do a shameless plug for Tass. You need all these tools to be able to figure out where people are going to drop more points than you is the game we're playing for GAC now. So if you're getting your 55 and I'm getting a 57 or I'm getting a 65, you're getting a 63, I win. Funny enough, how numbers work, hashtag math. Um, that's where it's at. So I need to figure out everything I can about you to make you draw the way I need you to do. Um, and I just got to do better. And afford maybe a possibility of something small. That's the lesson learned is that now it's it's full on because I need you to drop more than I do. Very fair. It's a good lesson. That's a good one to take. Sasha, how about you? When next we roll yeah. around to fives. You know, um, I, I think one takeaway uh, that this came to from my experience of like staring at that like 80% deflection cron on a uh, saw squad that had Chirrut, and that is that when the Afra data cron's gone, next fives, squad, you know, saw's going to be a real menace. Like you have to plan for it. I had been using Afra pretty consistently. And next time not having Afra means like Saw is definitely drawing like a, a GL. Um, I mean, I, I think <clears throat> you can throw like Triad, Sith, maybe Malgus, and you, you've got a shot depending on uh, how they focus fire and where Doubt goes with Seth their team. But generally, Saw is going to be a menace again. You think um, Jabba's still a slam dunk with uh, without the Bausch crumb? I don't know. It's a great question yeah. because I, I actually... Sorry, what was that there? I think yes, it depends on how strong yeah. your cron is versus their doubt cron, because you can also have doubt. Hmm. True. True. It's just yeah, it, right. it, it, it Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you're right, we're gonna see job on offense a ton. And then yeah. uh you know, the the last sort of takeaway is man, we really we really need a larger board. I just uh yeah. I, it, just to bolster defenses, make it more interesting. 
but um, it's, for five, we do have I'm too many teams. Three. Sorry to cut yeah. you off. We do have too many teams, yeah. and it, and we have complained in the past that you know expanding the boards just kicking the can. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. we've all we've spoken on this before. Like it's it's to the point now where you're already leaving things like CLS by the wayside and picking it apart for its parts occasionally, not even full time. Uh, yeah. So so even if it is a kick the can solution, it's it's time to kick because. Until they have something longer term planned out, it feels pretty bad not using these, you know, great characters that we all have put the effort in to have very highly tuned. You know, it's uh, yep. it feels bad. I'm, I'm right there with you. How about you, Tess? And, and it's worse. No, Don't on. forget. And and it's worse. <laughs> Let's not forget. We have a sol- another solo character now. We have Super Sid. So it's like <laughs> yeah. They're, oh, geez, they're, yeah. they're giving us oh, yeah. I mean, and no, Bane for I, I this like threes stuff. that we didn't I have last I threes. Like this stuff, but it's like it's like we need a bigger board. No, you don't. Here's just more solo characters. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. <laughs> I mentioned this to Tess earlier today about how this just feels so tone deaf. Because if CG has decided we're in an efficiency meta, like I, I mentioned, I floated this to Tess, and I again, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna say it here. And then you guys can get mad. Then silly TJ can be mad at me. I really want some of these level nines to say on defense. Can we just like? I'm not gonna get mad about do, that. I think that's great. We I just do and maybe the Bokron only works on defense. I don't know. Can mm-hmm. we just like? Yeah. We need something. I, I mean, something. I mean, that feels. You don't bad want a raid. Too, you, you don't want a. You don't want your raid to come back many, many times along with your Ben. What's wrong with you? It's so ridiculous. I, I know what you're saying. Like, I get it. That would be one way to do it. It would make things a little less overtuned for attack and, and like, oversimplify your defenses and stuff like that. But that also feels bad because you'd have to work up that cron. Or you, I, I don't know. I don't like the idea of you know, building you, up resources that are denied up, for use. We already like that. work. We already. No, 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 no. See, here's, here's the problem, right? We already worked up the sock. We already worked up the cheer it crown to put it on defense. We don't use that shit on offense. We already do this. Every single set, we already do this. Yeah, but think I about think about Sasha's position this week where he was able to pivot them off. And, like, a lot of folks have been doing that. And, that, and that's been great. That's a great strategic, like, high-level coup right. to pull on your opponent. Because, well, of right, course, they're looking three. for saw and DT. Right, right, right. Okay, you, you, you want... You, you, fine. Then here's a better, maybe, solution. It's like... The level three does something different to, on the defense than on offense. Like on offense, it does something on defense. It's like thirty percent health. I'm down with I, that. I think I, I, here's what I'm gonna say. Right, I, I got to take Dagger's point because what's happened is the player has evolved on Datacron. It's no longer the big surprise because immediately when they come out, before it had that that shock value, that shock value, in my opinion, of where we've come and how far we've come with them is like modding. Right, you can do some trick modding, like like I'll call out Sasha and his trick modding he's done on me, and I'll specifically go to that point. You can only go so far before we adapt and learn. And the player base, especially the sweaty, so I'll call us and anybody who's like us, has adapted to learn it much faster. We're getting faster, and because we can get them so much uh, more readily, and they're so much more able, we're able to get them quicker, and we're able to build them up. We're learning, and so because we're getting that with anything else, it starts to lose that that value that it had because even then we'll go into week one of threes right and they'll have this value that's there but look how fast we adapt mm-hmm. it's just it's just coming to the nature of the beast of yeah they brought datacrons in yes they were needed and i agree where they're at now but they only hold so much value now because we learned very quickly how to adapt and overcome them so for the most that, part that yeah. Yeah. Data, they're doing is gone data, yeah datacrons are actually losing value now yeah. the more teams mm-hmm. we have the less like you need like three total datacrons, and the rest don't really matter much. Yeah. yeah. Unless they go like this new upcoming set where so many of the level nines are very highly, highly desirable. Well, sure, sure, sure. But like my point is, is that Kit Fisto is not going to move the needle for you that much. It'll mm-hmm. help. It's another option. But my the point I'm trying to make is, if you already have infinite options, and they give yeah. you and datacrons give you more options, are is that actually more options? Uh, right. I because you just, your point. you just do something different. Point. It, you, I agree. Like you could use, like I, I think it's smart the three, right? Because you could just figure out another one, right? Well, I don't have the other. Let's say you want twelve. I, I don't have the other nine, but I have these three. All right, so I'll just take something off a of defense because that's not going to matter anyway. I'll just put on offense to fix that problem that I, I don't have an answer for right now because we have so much to go with. 
And, and I'm curious about Sasha's thoughts on this because I know he's one. Yeah, of the us three, us three that. windbags are hogging all the air. So let 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 him throw in a comment. I, I know he was trying earlier. No, I, look, I an interesting uh, kind of balance to strike because the reality is, like all of us, we really enjoy being able to get creative and have these competitive matches, but we're all also sensitive to this game demanding too much of our time. And like, I, as I start thinking about what like the most obvious solutions or the simple solutions, like you increase the board, they all start like it, as much as they kind of serve the good, they also serve the bad. Um, so like, I, I, I don't, I don't have any simple answers on this, but I, uh, I would like to be able to use more of my roster. I'd like to be able to um, have more wrinkles or just variables that you can play with in setting this stuff. Uh, I, to CG's credit, I actually really respect the fact that they rotate between fives and threes because at least for me, my attention span and like the sort of evolution, like rapid evolution of meta encounters that I find three weeks worth of this stuff and then moving to a completely different format is, is, is pretty darn healthy. Here. Um, I think if, yeah, if, if they could just add, uh, like, in, in my view, like, maybe it's you add either one more rotational element where I don't think they'll do this, but, like, what if they said, okay, you're going to go threes and fives as we know them now, but every third month is going to be full roster versus full roster. And that is, like, you get to set your entire – it's a huge board. You set your entire roster on defense in whatever configuration you would like across multiple zones, uh, approaching territory war magnitude and scale. And then you're also have, – you have a duplicate of your own roster you're using on offense. And that is, like, you're bringing everything to bear on both sides, and it's uh, – like it gets very deep and it's an exhaustive engagement of roster. Like something like that, I, I thought would be. I, I would love that as a one-off. I don't think I could do that for a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe that. I, I was just thinking for like if we would do three weeks of that yeah. as oh, no, part no, of I the like, five. I like that idea. Yeah, but no, um, really quick. Here's here's something that a different team I played that day. What was called inv invigorated and exhausted. So every team you put on defense got like in that game it was twenty percent max health, for essentially protection offense defense and if you lost it became it would be invigorated two then it would be invigorated one then it would be exhausted one and every time mm -hmm. it was 10 percent health and protection every time it lost every time you lost to it mm -hmm. right so you buff every team's flat stats on defense and then if you lose to it it decreases uh the power of that team mm. and i i think I, i'm not saying that so we should do that i'm just saying it's an interesting way yeah, force kind of wrinkled to punch up, and then you can send in burner teams because a burner team wouldn't just pull cooldowns; it would take away ten percent stats. Yeah. Anyways, fair. it's just you know, th thoughts of ways to make gas a little more interesting because it's only getting worse in the in the uh, in the sense that it, uh, it 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 is what it is, and it's an efficiency life, and we're all living it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tough spot to be in. All right. Um, as far as my lessons learned, um, so here's the thing. Riva on offense is really good against Qui-Gon. Um, however, I saw that there are, you know, if you're going to set Keller and Beck, uh, and it seems like, it, I don't know if it, whether or not Keller and leadership has any interaction that causes um, it to happen more frequently. I have no idea. But there is a non-zero chance that your Riva can fail to kill Kel. It worked fine for me the one time I did it this week. It, they just fell right over. It was great. But I saw that the only times that Riva had lost, it was because they timed out on a Kel that was bugged out and refused to die. Uh, I, say th I say this about Riva on offense because in a world where Bane Sass just consumes it 64-65... Feels pretty bad. Like throwing a team as well specced out, as heavily invested as Inquisitors, just throw them right to the wolves? The answer is yes. Because the alternative is something else that you're going to um, 
take on See, offense. Cash Ka- Ka- finally came to my side of thinking on this. I love you for this. Well, it's like, it's, yeah, they'll kill your Riva, or they can kill your Jabba, your Lord Vader, or your Leia. Well, they I've done it both Riva. ways. I've done it both ways, and what it actually was for me was something like it was either Riva or Treya or Slacker down, and I just was able to do more with slacker and treya and that's just something i had to play yeah. out now it's not that i didn't have um a, a round or so where reva strip banners i think somebody got a 57 on my reva the one time i had it on uh down this week so clearly my gambit to draw out bane sass on something else worked but still it just it, it wasn't worth it to me because you know, like the one loss I had this week, had I made just that one swap with Riva uh, and had Slacker for offense, definitely was in my pocket. So, you know, that it's that that's one thing. And then um, one of the the great uh, uh, things that I benefited from, I, I, I found this earlier this month, earlier this season, but one of the great ways to upset people in this really high efficiency meta is to take the least of your teams. You know, we've, we've had a few seasons in the past where we've been strongly incentivized to have these, you know, decked out teams, as many Relic Nines as possible, stack them with bulk, throw as many stats on them, and set them on the bottom front wall. And so a stalwart bottom front wall has been really part of what we've lived with for a long time. And uh, people opened up this season much the same way. It's not that it was bad, it's that it was conventional. And that w- with everybody playing the way that they're playing now, um, everybody's, you know, you have these badass teams, that's fine. They're going to reserve each and everything required to 65 it or better. Uh, so pivoting the least of your teams to the bottom front wall, force them to make choices immediately. And if you, you know, you you had a... a, a top front that you know didn't give anything away in terms of what you might have in the back you could either feel free to cheese them or you could actually have something really big and nasty back there that hopefully you've drawn something out that they were you know they're gonna regret i had it happen both ways for me this week but the the value of setting the least of your roster up front and and forcing them to work from the bottom of their roster up was something uh was one of the few ways that you might upset somebody this entire season all right um last but never least guys final thoughts we close out this season um we all survived i think we're all positive for this season were we all positive dagger included i know you missed some matches no. but no not this no, season I ended, okay. up going, I ended up going three and six Ooh, okay. Well, you're going to have a, a good spring back for that. I was going to say, that's a, that's a yeah, great day. This is going to be awesome. This first, like, first two weeks are going to be fat. I took the last two rounds and the fir- of last week and the first two rounds of this week off. So I took, I say took them off, but like, I, I didn't really have time. So, yeah, I took four L's for basically for free. Yeah. yeah. That, that's six, so, that's yeah. six W's for threes. Oh. Yep, three v threes. Uh, I think I'm. In, I think I'm like just inside the top two hundred to start threes. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. That's oh yeah, you're gonna to be, be eating, eating good. Okay, yeah. which, which ironically is probably just like uh, just outside the top one hundred if they have to fix this goddamn erodium bug. Uh, hey, they acknowledge it. You you shut your mouth. They said, "Hey, we see it." It's it's. <laughs> I don't want to sound ungrateful. It is literally progress that they said that they you know they acknowledge its existence. But that was like not less than two weeks ago, right? Yep. Yep. But you, like, you, you look, 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 other Vader. You just take it. Don't not a peep. Not, yeah, that's right. Pay, pig. Just pay. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for putting the mushroom <laughs> on my forehead. May I have another? That's you right. Just take that and you run. That's right. All right. Well, anyway, sorry, Dagger. Back to you. Your final thought. What's your What's your last kernel of wisdom for the people as we close out this five season? Your hat is dumb. Final answer. No. <laughs> oh. You should get a different final answer. You say that almost at the end of every season. At least it's consistent. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes, well, but the, the, the hat, the hat has feelings. To, to say nothing yes, yes, of mine. Is, what did the hat do to you? To three v three, and I had, I had. We talked about the alternative that I wanted to say, which I should not be. Anyways. Did you know? K- 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 did you know that it doesn't have to be only two things? Did you know? I don't understand. I, I need. I know you need a moment to recover. I understand. 
I, I don't understand. Please explain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Yes. Your last kernel of wisdom. Oh, I, I mean, I guess you already gave it. All right. Fair. I did. Okay. TJ, how about you? I don't think we're going to change anything uh, efficiently. I know we're going to play with some new stuff, but I, I think uh, what we're walking into is, well, we got to figure it out, but there's a lot of a level nine, which we'll cover in the in-between. Um, I think it's the time to, I would listen to the in-between is what I think you're going to want to find a lot of valuable tips. If I had to guess, that one's going to come with yeah. a lot of details going in. That's Plug probably the, the most... Video. I, I, in between think, video. I, I think the ASAP video, looking at the Datacrons, because there's a lot there. It's like a whole Bible of information to look at. And this is the season of level nine people. So just be, with that many teams on defense, we're, I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing a lot of level nines. So just be ready. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my feedback. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. All right. And, you know, and as far as, you know, final notes go, uh, a plug for your boy is not the worst you could do. <clears throat> Tag or take note. <clears throat> Uh, Sasha, how about you? Your final thought for the people, closing us out. Um, you know, I, I, it's kind of along those same lines, and, and some, most of the time, Daggers mentioned this one. I, one, uh, I'd, I'd forgotten to, and that is like this is a new Datacron set. It's a, in an off week. It's a big crunch week. Like, uh, there's particularly for anybody that's listening to this is a competitive GAC player, but like that race to try and get as many impactful DCs as you can going into that first week of threes, just because you need so many more and we will have just dusted all of set, uh, 12, I guess mm -hmm. it is. Right. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's just the, the, the datacon datacron race is on. Uh, so totally agreed. Listen to that content. Uh, and then, uh, whether it's, uh, fun for you or a hell of a chore you got to do a ton of conquest yes that is very very true and and you know uh, for my part here my my last thought is piggybacking here on sasha's i suppose um with this first week of conquest as you know with with a new set involved you're going to be able to roll into week one with you know one week's worth of conquest. So if you're going to have a few of the relic nines, you're going to have to go pretty hard. That's going to cost a lot of crystals. That's not something I'm personally planning on doing. Which means um, I'm going to uh, have maybe a couple, three, four uh, level nines at at best here going into week one. And if you're going to be like me, if you're not going to have a ton, like TJ's going hard, he's going to have most, if not all the ones he's going for. And there's like eight, nine of them that are like probably 12, worth your 12. time. There, there are 12. There are 12 data cards. It's just crazy, bro. Oh, yeah. Okay, Whoa. so he's going for 12. But, I mean, we'll see how much he actually has. But the point is is that he's going hard early because he knows just how powerful these uh, these level 9s are. And the more of these you have, the more latitude you have in how you want to plan out uh, this first week here when, when we roll into 3s. But um, you, if you're not going to buy your way into it, you're, you're farming it, you're, you're going to have only a few... You'll have to keep that in mind and, and be all that much lighter on defense so that you are not caught unaware. Uh, it means that, you you know, if you're a player like me and you like to, to mud wrestle folks, but you're, you're forced into this efficiency uh, situation, be conservative. Be uncomfortably conservative. But don't get caught flat-footed on this stuff because these, uh, quite a few of these are actually very powerful. And considering that, like what we were saying earlier with Bane and now the new Sidious coming into the mix, you're having more single one, one or two character offenses that are going to full banner clear for an underman at that. Um, not cool. Not cool. So, so don't even try to, to set like something cute and be uh, really clever on defense if you don't have the goods to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with, with the new set 14. All right, guys. Um, as always, I, I have one more. I have one more task. We're, no, we're get on in. I, I get on in. Free, free. I, I you know how it is. I learned from Dagger. I learned from Dagger. Right. Um, we're also because Dagger said his hat is dumb. New sub goal for tasks. We got nomads who gives millions of subs. Let's get this man some hats. If he's gonna be the hat dude on Twitch for for Swiggo, get this man some hats. He's poor, guys. He needs your guys' help. Get yeah. get him hats. 
You got you. You want to you want to have people send me different hats to wear. I would do that. I mean, I, I would it, say set goals for hats. They can give you money, and you can go buy set hats. a goal you need for to be a hat. Here. We have to then we'd have to have a, a community vote. Um, I'll 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 put it out. I think there. that's good. Why we'll don't you do just it. get? Why don't you just? You already talked about it. So I'm gonna out Look, pass here. He already found a copy of the same hat in his icon on Etsy. Yeah, the one that's, that's immediately behind me on camera. Oh, I know you guys don't see then. it, but it's there. Trust me. Yeah, that, that's yeah. It's in his little Here's icon. the thing. Here's the thing. Jester's hat. Here's the thing, though. This hat is beautiful. This hat is iconic. This hat is also made out of wool, and we are heading into the summer. And I absolutely hate sweating my ass off, not only Which just in my own head, but literally you in the dance. flesh. Look, getting you are already you sweating your ass off. You play your yes. goddamn gack. You might as well wear the hat. It is a different yes. kind of sweat. Like right now, like after finishing this last round, we've got a little bit of pit moisture going on. As opposed to like the tops of my shoulders on either side are wet from all of the pouring going down my neck. Like it's this a is different the, this order. This is just of the hot. price you have to pay for putting this on your icon. For for and, glory, and, you know, and, I'll, as we make I'll, you I'll dance for the Magic mind. Mountain video, you must dance for this monkey dance. We we what we need is somebody who actually has the craft skill to make one that isn't like of the hottest possible un, like material to wear in the summer. I guess it's not polyester. Man, that would probably you could be requisition worse. one. If only you were able to requisition one. Google exists, my friend. I suppose. Hence the sub goal. Hence the sub goal. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm it's agreeing with TJ here. Well, hey, that's that's not you a figure terrible. How much, you, you figure out how much it's going to cost you. You figure out how many subs that is, and you know, I'm sure you might as well stop by sometime and buy it for you. <laughs> in one in one setting. In one setting. <laughs> that's true. I don't really Sorry. make a I'm lot sorry, of no, use of the. To this, it's all in fun. It's all in fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't really make a lot of use of that stuff, and I should. I, I, it is more fun. You, you know more about the business of what we do here, but I should add a little uh, a little fun in there, and I'll, and I'll take that under advisement, uh, TJ. I I, um, I I will put out a word uh, for a poll and see what the people think. Like I'm, it, it, hmm, go ahead. If we do video for the in between video, mm -hmm. I request you wear the shirt I got you. That's fine. I've worn it before on video. I'd, I'd wear it again. Yeah. That's fine. The question yeah. is, are any of you guys going to be available for camera for the in between? We'll I have will. to find out. Sir, I, 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 I live. Well, I live camera ready. You do. And then I've told you. <laughs> and I told you that if you give me twenty four hours in advance, I can be on camera. We just haven't really cared or talked about it the last few times. That's but the fair. In between video, we can schedule. But that doesn't need to be done on a Monday. That's fair. That's all fair. All right. I can likely join for camera too. So yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Well, hey, we'll 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 make it a goal here for our very next video here. We'll, and you know, you folks here on YouTube will find out how well we were able to keep do that. But anyways, guys, uh, ra wrapping up here. You know, I always appreciate you uh, making time to make our show. You guys will get your dedicated shout out here in a minute. Um, Everybody who's watching this here on YouTube, you can catch me live streaming on Twitch, um, except when I'm not available to stream on Twitch. Sometimes I'll stream on my Discord. You can find the link to both my Twitch channel and my Discord right here in my uh, YouTube information. Um, check out this Set 14 Datacron video I know I mentioned earlier, but you know I, I feel like you're, you're going to get used to that. I, I believe that's coming out Thursday morning, so look for that. Um, and then of course, yeah, all of my previous, uh, Twitch streams go up here on YouTube. Um, you know, the full VOD with chapters added, you can browse on through, get all the intel, save yourself some time. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here at Tassinix Gaming, you want to support the stream, you want to support the channel, first, um, you know, like the video, hit subscribe for the channel, uh, leave a comment if you got one, because I love to respond to them. And also, you know, tell tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your grandma, tell your grandma's, like, friends, you know? Uh, if they're really interested in high-end uh, you know, Star Wars strategic play, this is where they need to be, you know, where they're watching from the nursing home. But, uh, yeah, yeah in, in the vein of that support, check out patreon.com forward slash Uh There's something there for any upwardly mobile GAC player. Uh, whether it's jumping in to the Tass House at $5 to get the early access to my YouTube content and just be involved. You know, um, I'm in the voice chat daily. Most of us are. Uh, hang out. We play a few different games, but we're always able to chat and you know talk turkey about the game. 
Um, if you also were inclined to get the higher level intel on your opponents, you could jump in at the ten or fifteen dollar tiers for the Omega Bot and and, uh, and or the Omega Bot plus Hot Utils bundle. So whether you like those detailed scouting reports or you want to take advantage of the loadout and uh, mod inventory management features of Hot Utils, there's something for you. We got to thank the patrons that make all this possible. Starting a VIP access, thank you, goes out to White Wolf, Sam Vimes, Jobin4527, Stark Strategy Gamer, Renee Bebe, Deadpool Cow28, Johnny B. Ottawa, JJ's Productions Twitch, Sweens14, Darth QPPMG, Ray's Malbus, and Brock Thud Steel. At VIP Access Plus, jumping in on the Omega Bot, Trevor Boy Gaming, Striker, and Esh Satnaticum, thank you guys so much. At VIP Access Premium, the new option with the hot uh, utils bundled in there. Thank you to Quig, Ibanek, and Sir Boss, uh, you know, seizing the opportunity. At the top of the list, there is no substitute for Nomad's Reaper in Jester's Club Elite. This man has crushed it this season with uh, some really record-breaking hype trains. Um, he's really led the charge. Appreciate you so much, not only just for this month, but all the months and the years now going on with your fantastic support. All right, guys. Uh, last but never least are the special thanks. Yoda Force, one of my earliest supporters, former Guildmaster back when I was in Vanguard, got me this microphone uh, when it was early days and I had mine break down. You know, uh, we never forget the ones that were good to us in, uh, early on. He's long since quit the game, but we remember him fondly. To Mrs. T, my wife, thank you for this amazing dinner. You actually just served me uh, literally as I'm delivering this spiel. It's an amazing looking steak uh, with a salad. Uh, not, so not only do I have just a fantastic dinner here waiting for me, but you also keep my, uh, you know, my, my wonderful daughter, our wonderful daughter, out of my hair during the stream for the most part so that I am not forced to write the alphabet or the numbers 1 through 40 multiple times on stream. Really appreciate that. To Dagger, TJ, and Sasha Isha, my co-hosts here on Plotting and Scheming. Couldn't do it without you guys. Really proud of what we're doing here. Um, thank you so much for your involvement and, you know, for all the time that I seize from, uh, you know, your work and family lives. All right, let's pivot back on over to the main scene. And, yeah, uh, enjoy this, folks. We'll, we'll talk to you again next week on the in-between video. Working on confirming the special guest. Hoping it's going to pull through, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, until then, you know, as always, it's been real. It's been awesome. It's been real awesome. Take care. <laughs>